So good afternoon, everybody. Here we are, Jiva Maya Yoga Wisdom Talks on uh, Wednesday, September 9th already. Goodness. And I don't know where you are in the country, but I'm in Las Vegas, Nevada. And today we are suddenly out of the triple digits. So I am a happy camper. <laughs> and I'm even happier to be welcoming back into Aurora. Thank you so much for being with us today. Um, I think almost all of you know Indu, for those that don't, you're in for a treat for the next 30 minutes, and I will be posting her website and all her information and her books, and there's just so much about this divine teacher that's in front of us right now. So let's take it away with, with this conversation. Um, this whole month is about um, the, the, the uh, spiritual healing of the the spiritual hearing healing practices that we can use through the teachings of yoga and we're we're allowing the um the five senses to be our guide and today we're talking about touch so really understanding um how how touch is used with both ayurveda and yoga in the actual healing aspect of it so maybe just an overall um, of, of touch and, and what it is and the importance of it. And then maybe we can segue right away into, um, so there are always opposites. So there is this healing aspect, but then maybe there's also an aspect that can be very disturbing um, as well. So maybe to understand what those disturbances may be and how they might show up. That's a load of a question. <laughs> <laughs> First of all, please accept my greetings, accept my namaste to you, Abby Abhaya, and to all those who are watching now or may watch later. Thank you so much for having me back, as well as for your generosity for hosting these talks and inviting people and really picking up these topics consciously and uh, seeing what will benefit the viewer and the listener. And this month's series that you have, the, the Tanmatra Chikitsa or the healing through the sensory pathways, I think it is just, it is, this is the modern day yoga therapy. Because in, in present times, it is through senses that our mind is overloaded. It is through senses, uh, through the sensory pathways of vision, of touch, of sound, of taste, of fragrance, uh, that we are not able to always discern what is appropriate and what is not. And therefore, there is a lot of processing for the mind and the emotions and the body to do. But the good side is we can use the same tool for healing. And uh, today, our focus is around touch, which is a very powerful medium for self-care, a very powerful medium for uh, self-healing, a very powerful medium to maintain the harmony between body, mind, and breath. So we can go as, as much deep as we would like to, but you know, I would uh, just, uh, what, what would you like to talk about today if, between all those questions? Let's take them one at a time. <laughs> all right, great. So the disturbances, let's start with, with the bad news first, so to speak, <laughs> and then we'll get to the good news. So the disturbances that we may find that will be the imbalances that we, that we will find or that can cause the imbalances, what would those be at this time? Because I think with all of us still somewhat in isolation, maybe some of these sensory things are really a little bit being more of us are on the computer longer maybe more of us are watching more tv etc how is all of that affecting us um, from the point of view of balance and mm. thank you thank you for bringing this question the uh, for dialogue uh Abhaya. so let's see touch the the word for touch in sanskrit is a sparsha and sparsha is the birthplace of the air element even prior to the elements, the five element theory that Ayurveda talks about, earth, water, fire, air, space, and even the yogic understanding that the body is made up, not just this body, but the macrocosmic body is made up of these five elements. Prior to these five elements are these, uh, are these tanmatras, these subtle, minor, minutest possible way in which the energy manifests. So one of that is a sparsha, which translates to touch. 
So this itself, just knowing this, contemplating upon it is powerful that the birthplace of air element and therefore vata dosha and therefore any imbalance associated with vata dosha is through the substance or the tan matra of sparsha or touch. And as you rightly mentioned, the touch is not just physical touch. When someone says something to us, we say, oh, it touched my heart, which means the sound can touch the heart. Or if someone is really delicious, oh, the texture of it was so smooth, or the sound was so melodious or so comforting. These things are adjectives we generally use for touch, which means that there is a subtle aspect of touch through vision, through sound, through fragrance, through all sensory pathways, not just through physical touch. So that is important to open our minds to that touch can happen or we can, our mind and body can experience touch through sound, through taste, through fragrance, and not just through physical touch. Now, since these all sensory gateways are open for receiving touch, which could be, let's say, pleasant or unpleasant, or harmonious or that which leads to imbalance, it is important to understand that what kind of things can lead to imbalance so that we can avoid or reduce those, those instances or those stimuli. In Ayurveda, the understanding of these subtle sense therapies is that it can, that there could be three kinds of imbalances. And Listeners and viewers, if I'm going to say some Sanskrit terms, which may seem new for you, after this uh, talk is published, I'm going to go and write down some of these terms in the chat, in the, in the, in the, yeah, in the chat, so that it's familiar for you. So these three things are Ati Yog, Heena Yog, Mithya Yog. Ati Yog, Ati Yog and Heen Yog are related to quantitative imbalance, that which is because of too much quantity or too little quantity, if quantity brings to imbalance. And Mithya Yog is when quality of a substance relates to imbalance. So just know that there are quantity, there are imbalances that could be related to quantity and there could be imbalances related to quality. So how can Ati Yog affect the sensory pathway and therefore can disturb vata or can disturb the mind and make it rajasic, disturbed, overwhelmed, distressed out or dull, sad, depressed, uh, demotivated, contracted, retracted. So ati yoga means too much of it. Now, how can we experience too much of touch? One of the things Abhaya, you pointed out, like we are watching so much a screen these days. At the same time, really through physical touch, one aspect of it is it is reduced. As you mentioned, we are very much in isolation. But at the same time, in the name of self-care, we may be overusing a lotion or overusing a cream or over pampering the body or maybe not uh, too much in tune with or in harmony with what is going on outside and maybe overdressing and underdressing. So just something to think about that am I overdoing it in the name of self-care because overdoing is not better than underdoing. It is equally, it is equally negative. So pay attention to Ati Yoga that what all is touching your body and if it is too much of it. If you are enjoying a texture which is related to touch, are you taking too much of it to pacify? Is it really for the body or is it for the mind? what is happening let's say your mind is really agitated and you switched on something and you're watching binging on a television series or binging on a on a netflix or hulu i don't know all those different kind of series that are out there is it really to numb the mind and the touch that you are receiving through that visuals it may be too much that is ati yoga pay attention to that heen yoga on the other side is not enough let's say maybe you're experiencing itchiness or roughness or dryness on the skin but not paying attention to it and leaving it dry and leaving it rough so or if you're feeling cold and really not listening to your body this is lack of proper attention but in terms of quantity that is not enough and mithya yoga on the other side is 
when it is inappropriate. So there is attention, there is, you are providing that touch, but it may be unpurposeful, it may be inappropriate, it may be incompatible. Example, let's say I'm giving this example because, you know, uh, one, if you give one example and go through the line of it, it kind of settles well. So if you're applying, let's say some cream, some lotion, some aesthetic products, some makeup products, some hair product, and you're not paying attention to the quality of it, that is mithya yoga, that is incompatible, or you're wearing something that may actually not be soothing, comforting, pleasant to the body, but you're not listening to it, or we are not paying attention to it. And another aspect of mithya is at times we do such self-pacifying behaviors but which may actually be destructive. For example, picking the skin, pricking, scratching, uh, you know, just scratching the nail. These, these are also, this is also negative touch feedback to the body, which affects the vata, which affects the doshas, which affects the state of mind. So pay attention. I would think of it, I'm going to give you a homework. Tomorrow, wake up and Take five minutes to contemplate upon what is it that is too much, too little, and incompatible associated with touch going on in my life, in my everyday life, and as a part of lifestyle. We're going to break for a commercial. <laughs> <laughs> Since we're on the subject of... Um, there is this product called Yogi Glows. It's amazing. And it comes in this adorable little red bag and it is phenomenal. Um, I've been using grains a lot uh, ever since I was introduced to Ayurveda, what, 20 years ago or something ridiculous, right? This is phenomenal. You can just mix it with water. You can mix it with oil. You can do it with yogurt and do a mask. It's Get it. <laughs> it's very simple. <laughs> and I'm going to give you. I'm going to give you um, um, Indrajit's um, website um, when I when I upload this and everything into the into Facebook and YouTube, and you'll you'll be able to see everything. It just it's amazing, but it's a lovely, lovely product, and it's perfect for what you're talking about. I also wanted to just mention that I think that maybe now during this time of wearing masks, that we're learning how to touch somebody else with our, through our eyes. And I've really noticed how, how I'm, I'm consciously aware of that when I'm looking at somebody, I'm very conscious that I'm, that I'm giving them what it is that I, that I would normally give them if I could touch them, yeah. Yes, that's a very in, important and uh, valuable point that you have brought, Abhya, that uh, these days when our face is masked, literally half of the face is masked. I was just thinking about it in Minnesota winters, when you will start wearing the caps and mask and the star, uh, nothing is going to be visible. And if it's going to be during the day and if the sun is going to be bright and you pair, wear the sunglasses, nothing is going to be visible. But you're right that I think there is, I, I personally, I truly believe in it, that every challenge has a silver lining. And there, a humanity should never lose hope. And think of the past, just look at it, that how many turbulences and how many pandemics and how many challenges we have faced as community, as humanity, and we have come on the other side and we have learned from it. So do not lose hope. And yes, even though our face may be masked, our hearts may be more open. And as you mentioned, we may be paying more attention to how can I authentically communicate through my eyes or through my arms, you know, through the movement of the hands, because how we move our hands is really an extension of our mind. Right. And we touch people with our gestures or we offend people with our gestures. So it's really, really important to pay attention to this non-verbal modes of communication that touch people pleasantly or not. <laughs> Beautiful. And then in yoga, we are taught, of course, about mudra and we're taught about um, the marma points or marmani, um, which I really, really would like to address. And maybe we start with mudra. Um, and if you are not familiar with Indu's amazing book on mudras, it's just, it's a, it's a treasure. Um, it's 
it's almost falling apart because I opened it so many times and bend it back and the poor thing has really survived quite well despite my mistreatment of it. Um, but the mudras that are inside and the whole history of mudra, maybe you want to maybe uh, explain just a little bit about the history of mudra, but then what it is that we can actually bring into our lives, um, just some simple and really beautiful mudras. Abby really knows me well. Abhaya really knows me well. That's why she was very careful and said, maybe a little bit, just touch a little bit about mudras. She was like, if I ask this woman to say a little bit more, she's going to go into too many details. <laughs> well, yes, so mudras is one of the finest methods uh, for sensory healing, especially related with touch. And why is that? Because mudras are all, all mudras are non-verbal modes of communication. And non-verbal modes of communication, if we talk about the entire sphere of communication, more than 90% of communication is non-verbal. And this communication arises, most of the communication arises from our limbic brain, you know, from that part of the brain which is where, uh, which is kind of hardwired to our um, evolution, which is hardwired to who we really are and what we really think, and it acts impulsively, it acts instantaneously. So it, it, so which means that our body language is essentially all of the body language, whether it's eyes, whether it's neck movement, whether it's shoulder movement, whether it's movement of the spine forward, backward, twist, leaning, this is all pointing towards emotional states. And the movement of the hands, if the hands are moving upward or downward and outward or narrowing, this is all communicating what's going on in the mind. And the same is for the legs, you know, learning about body language has, I've always been curious about it. I think that's where the seed was planted to really study it in a refined way through mudras. Do you know, uh, Abby, that if you have to read someone's authentic communication, which part of the body communicates the most truthful, uh, in, a more, in the most truthful way? If you have to think of the body and think about which part would communicate most authentically what's going on in someone's mind. Just randomly, see what comes to your mind. The spine. You would say spine. Yes. The thing is, we turn, we, we, we have been trained to uh, move our spine in a certain way. Well, don't sit like this, do, which means that it is something that we can train, we can think about consciously and adjust. The part that is most distant from our brain is hands and feet, yeah. which means we tend to become unconscious about it. And this is the part, this is the part, hands and feet, which unconsciously communicate what is truly going on. Because we have learned how to mask our expressions, even as a child. Oh, put up the right face. Why making this face? Meet this person. Oh, you're meeting this one. It doesn't matter how you feel. Say hello with a smile. So we have learned how to use the neocortex to change our responses, especially the facial expressions and the spinal gesture. But the hands and feet, we actually don't have much control on. Uh, this is where mudras come in. So it is not just a one way route. What we do with our hand also rewires the brain. It can also help in balancing the emotions. It can also help in reforming a, a different kind of pranic signature or breath signature. Now, there are certain mudras that mudras, especially hand gestures, because as I mentioned, there are so many kinds of mudras, but especially hands are extension of the heart. And heart is the seat of air element. So air element, hands, heart, touch are correlated to each other. You can put them in a string and that will be a necklace. So remember this, hands, touch, heart, and air element. They are directly connected to each other. So when you join your hands in mudras, it directly helps in uh, communicating to the brain, to the mind to calm down. Instead of sitting in meditation and wandering and um, 
really feeling angry or mad or frustrated why this thought is coming to my mind or why do I feel itching or why this part is hurting. If you join the fold the hands in mudras and legs are automatically in mudras if you're sitting cross-legged, that is a mudra. That is crossing, which means you're crossing the channel of communication and lifting that energy upward. The same when you join the hands in mudra, you're crossing this. You either don't communicate with anything outside, communicate with yourself through the sense of touch. There are a couple of mudras that come to my mind that can be really beneficial, keeping in mind uh, the change of weather, the change of seasons. Okay. Uh, so this season is marked by increase in the quality of dryness with the wind and increase in the quality of cold, in the quantity of cold. So cold and dry. And both these things uh, disturb the vata dosha. And it can show up in the form of shivers, colds, dryness of the skin, dry cough, uh, difficulty in falling asleep, overwhelm, you know, itching. So these are our digestive system imbalances. So the one that I feel will really be beneficial, and I'm going to show it, this is called Shank Mudra or Conch Gesture. So in this, in the left hand, in the left hand, you place the right hand thumb and you make a grip, you know, make a fist. So keep the left hand thumbs extended upward. Wonderful. Now bring the other hand fingertips towards the left hand thumb. Now, I don't know. Yeah, I can see how it looks like a conch. Yes. And Shank Mudra is one of the finest mudra to listen to your heart, to connect with your heart at this time where we may be feeling limited to how to connect with others or how to connect with uh, our family members who may, we may not be able to see for various reasons for the sake of their health or our health. Uh, it is important to get in touch with yourself. So this is Shank Mudra. This helps you connect with your own heart and it helps you calm down that Vata Dosha that brings a sense of insecurity and fear and anxiety. Any time of the day, for as long as you would like to do it, you can combine it with mantra or simply just hold it next to the heart or in the lap with relaxed arms for as long as you enjoy. Don't put too many do's and don'ts. That is one. But if the vata dosha is disturbing, if this change of season is disturbing your digestive system and is uh, causing these uh, symptoms of flatulence, bloating, constipation, or uh, cramping, in that case, um, the mudra that can be really beneficial is called samana mudra. And I will try to remember to put these things in the in the chat, Ati Yogi, Yin Yog, Mithya Yog, and the name of Shank Mudra and uh, Saman Mudra. So how to do this Mudra? Samana means balance. That's it. Samana means harmony and balance. So you bring all the fingertips with the thumb pad. So not like this. Just make sure it's not like this. It is like this. And you rest the hands on your knees palms facing up, which means the pointing, the pointer side pointing up and hold it. Now in, in this mudra, I would suggest you to hold it for two minutes. And um, if, you've, if you experience these symptoms on a regular basis after every meal, then I would suggest you to do it three times a day. Otherwise, if you experience them rarely or occasionally, then only the time when you are experiencing it or after meals holding it for two minutes. You don't have to manipulate your breath. The only thing is just keep your spine upright, which helps the prana to circulate in your whole body. Hmm? Do, do we have time for one more? <laughs> we still have more money. <laughs> okay, okay. So this last one I want to share because it's related to breathing. Okay. And this is this will benefit many. So this mudra is called the ling mudra. So if you experience dry cough, or if you experience con um, chest congestion, in that case, this would be really good. It's called the Linga Mudra, and it is to bring warmth to the body and warmth to the extremities. And I think it will benefit a lot of viewers and listeners that if you feel this cold and temperature imbalance in the body, how you practice this mudra. So you simply interlace the fingers with the left hand little finger down. That is important. Left hand little finger down, keep interlacing. 
the left hand thumb will automatically come up and see with the right hand index finger and thumb, make a circuit, make a loop. That's it. And just hold it next to your chest or in your lap. Within a matter of few minutes, it's going to bring this warming sensation in your chest and then to the extremities. So these are the three mudras I'm going to suggest you to practice as a sensory healing pathway through touch. That's beautiful. Thank you. <laughs> and then we come to Marmani, which is really um, so many, uh, I guess one of the biggest questions that I get asked about mar Marma points and Marmani is, is what the difference is between the Marma points and acupuncture. So maybe we can start right from there, which in a sense will also explain the Marma points. Wonderful. Acupuncture is one of the modality to access Marma points. One of the modalities. There are various ways methods to access marma points. For example, it could be just touch, just touch. It could be touch up along with pressure. It could be touch along with oil. It could be touch along with a needle. You know, it could be touch along with a pressure point stick. So acupuncture is just one of the healing methodology to work on marma points. And marma points are the Think of it as a bridge between the mental body and the physical body. The place where the, mar the mind starts to crystallize into the physicality of the body, that is a marma point, which means it is such a unique access point to our prana, to our mind, to our emotions, as well as a portal to consciousness. So when we work through marma point, we really are working through the entire spectrum of from being human to divinity. <laughs> it can lead you to that. Hmm? So then when we speak about Marmani, would, that, would it be safe to assume that Marmani is basically the, the practice of using the uh, Marma points? So Marma Chikitsa would be the uh, modality of using the wisdom of Marmani for healing. Because the wisdom of Marmani is not just used for healing. It was used for protection. It was used for self-defense. It is used in meditation. So when we talk about healing, that particular modality or that particular application would be called Marma Chikitsa. And Marmani simply means a Marma point a vulnerable sensitive zone or a bridge or a portal into the mind and consciousness. So, and there are so many ways to work on Marmanis. As I mentioned that uh, there are 108 such classical Marmanis in our body. And those of you who um, are into the study of chakras and subtle body, think of them as the eyes or the faces of the chakras on the body. So really all the chakras are the Maha Marmani or the Great Marmani. So through that you communicate through this bigger energy zones and through that to the mind and consciousness itself. So there are so many ways to work on Marma point merely by touching them or touch along with pressure or touch along with the application of something which, is, which could be an oil, which could be a powder, which could be a paste. So it could be anything or it could be simply the touch of your mind, which means concentration. Any yogic practice, whether it's asana, pranayam, shatkriya, relaxation, yoga nidra, they essentially go through marmani. When you experience that state, it is because you could go beyond the physicality of the body and touch the mind. So there are so many ways to work on a marma point. Uh, there are two methods that I would like to share with um, those who are watching it and they are really simple to practice and they are associated with this healthy, positive, constructive uh, touch, through touch healing. One is there are these two marma points in the center of the palm. This, the two marma point in the center of the palm and the center of the foot sole are considered to be the most powerful therapeutic marmani. 
and their name is Tal Ridya. I'm making a mental note for myself that I have to write down the name. Tal Ridya. Tal means flat surface and Ridya means the heart. The heart of the flat surface, that is the palm. And this marma point in the palm connects to all the 72,000 nadis in the subtle body. So you can bring energy in and this think of it as a locking, unlocking point of this energy that comes in and then flows through the hands into the heart and from the heart into the entire body. So if we work on this marmani, through that we can work on pacifying the vata in all those 72,000 nadis and all the other marmani. So how to work? You will need just any oil that is pleasing for you. Now, if it is fall, I would not suggest coconut oil, but sesame oil, olive oil, sunflower oil, or um, mustard oil. These are all good choices. Use any of this oil, put a drop in your hand, rub it till you feel warmth. That is important because that, that means the oil is now ready to be absorbed by the body. And then this is a tool, a marma tool called marma stick. And I think. Abhaya, you also have this, isn't it? Yes. So it is, you know, there are different parts to it, depending upon the size of marma, you use the back or the front of it. And there are many uses of it. But right now, what I would suggest for uh, the viewers to practice this, if you don't have this, then use a pen, wooden pencil or a pen. And you, after applying the oil, you simply put this marma stick and rub it from the heel of the palm to the fingertips and heel to the fingertips and heel to the fingertips. And if you have this kind of marma danda or marma stick, you see there are different ridges and grooves and spikes on it, which really works on different uh, zones and points and different meridians. So you work in a way so that you keep moving it down so that you get all those points and then keep moving it up. And wherever, and pay attention, there might be zones in your palms where you feel more sensitive and uncomfortable versus there might be zones where you feel dull. Wherever you feel dullness, put more pressure. Wherever you feel uncomfortable, spikiness or sensitivity, release the pressure. So listen to your body. So after doing it for about, I would say a couple of minutes, you will feel the warmth in your fingertips. Then use the back of this stick and press it in the center of the palm with the index finger, just exert pressure and hold it for about 10 counts and slowly release it. And do it once again, hold it and then release it. Do it about three to four times. And then once again, rub it. You can rub it at the back of the hands also. And that's it. The best time to do it is before going to bed. If you are someone who works on computer a lot, and if not, maybe on iPhone or I don't know what. We know that we hold this tension in the fingers, you know, in the finger joints. And that really affects the energy flowing into this marmani. So do it before going to bed to erase and release that tension in the palm. Okay. Yes. Right, right hand? No, both hands. Both hands. So after you complete this hand, then you do this hand. Right. Good. Thank you for asking that. So you, you do it on both the hands, both the sides. It doesn't matter which side you start with. So you do it on the palms, but if you're someone who stands on the feet a lot and uh, you know, then do it on the foot sole. So before going to bed, and if you tend to feel arthritic pains or stiffness in your joints upon waking up, then do it in the morning. You will, you will not wake up with the stool, not by your side if you try it once, because this, is, this really warms up the body and releases that tightness. So this is a simple practice to do. I feel it's accessible. If you don't have the marma stick, as I said, use a pen that is a value. If you feel motivated, if you feel inspired, you can get it from my website. But otherwise, just use something to just bring that warmth and work on this point. Start with that. And the other thing that's coming to my mind is, uh, again, there are many ways, thousands of ways to work on marmani. I'm trying to share the ones that can be accessible and does not require for you to be an Ayurveda and yoga student. You can just be someone who is interested in self-care and healing. So as Abhi Abhaya mentioned, this product, it's called, I'm just trying to show, give an angle, it's called Yogi's Glow. And it's a combination of 
fruits and herbs and flowers and spices. It's my own formula. And this formula is handed over to me by my grandmother and then polished with my guru, with my teacher, with my yoga Ayurveda guru. So this, this is a combination of different herbs and spices and uh, fruits and flowers in a combination that is tridoshic, which means it won't vitiate any dosha. Take this and uh, I will share a document that links to my website, which really talks about step-by-step -step how to use it for marma healing. But right now I'm just giving a sneak view that that might really help you to go through that document so you don't have to memorize everything and you have it handy. You can take a printout and then uh, use it. So there are, you just mix it with water. Although there are different mediums for different doshas, but it already is a complete product. So you just mix it with water, make a medium thickness paste, which means it doesn't run and it is not so cakey, it is not so dry that you cannot apply it. So medium thickness and apply it at a couple of zones. One is the center of the forehead. You see where my bindi, this dot is. Apply quarter size, you know, of that mixture here. This is a zone that really helps in pacifying pitta. Hmm? So, <laughs> yeah, calm down the mind, calm down the anger, the agitation, the, you know, we are all going through at different volumes of it or different shades of it, but it's there. And this area, the temple region, again, quarter size of it in the temple region, this is a zone to control the vata. Apply here and the third is apply in the notch of the throat between the two collarbones. This is related to kapha. This is simple, just apply. If you want to work on all the three doshas, I understand, you know, apply here, here and here. Leave it for five minutes, let it dry. And while it is drying, just lay down and put some guided relaxation or guide yourself in relaxation or simply focus on the touch, the fragrance and uh, the taste. How does it feel on the skin? And after five minutes, wipe it off, wash it off and apply your favorite, uh, you know, serum or oil or moisturizer on your face and my favorite is ghee clarified butter or almond oil apply that this is a simple way to do marma chikitsa and to invite a touch that brings some yoga which means balance in the body breath and mind that's awesome that's awesome we're about seven minutes over, but I don't want to, this is so, I mean, we, you can stay in forever. <laughs> We'd love it. <laughs> um, I don't want to leave, though, without really sharing some fantastic news, and that is that Indu has yet another book coming out called Soma, S-O-M-A. It'll be out before the end of the year, so please, please keep an eye for it. Um, if it's anything like, which it will be, her other books, it will be phenomenal um, and well worth purchasing and studying and reading and learning from, etc. So, um, as I said, we will um, we will post everything um, on 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 the Facebook and uh, Indu may add her her some of her things that I have forgotten. Um, so you'll have a complete uh, list of what it was that we were speaking about um, today. But I thank you so so much for your time. It's just it's glorious. Um, I don't know what else to say. You're just you're awesome. Thank you deeply. <laughs> thank you, Apeha, and thank you to the viewers. I really hope this time that you've spent is purposeful. And yes, watch all the other talks through Jiva Maya. I, I think each one of them is equally deep and beneficial. Thank you so much. Thank you. <laughs>